YTPC, Aristopolis here. It is almost 1.30 in the morning. Snowing like a mad champ outside. Got myself some chocolate milk. Found a little bit of a uh, sleepy hollow in my jar that I replenish my pipe pouch with. Still haven't cracked open the uh, half pound that I got. Still a little bit left in that use jar that I've got. But this is the first time I've smoked my Savinelli since before Christmas. Took it with me to Virginia, but never ended up smoking. I think I smoked one bowl while I was in Virginia out of my cob. It was raining so much that uh, that got smoked in my car outside. Telling that story the other day about that uh, substitute te teacher reminded me of something else. I guess got my memory juice flowing. And I remembered this one day after school, some uh, buddies of mine, guys that I usually hung out with, after after class I uh, my senior year I went to school about a half day and I had the uh, ICT program which I can't even begin to tell you what those initials mean but it had something to do with work release get, getting out of school early to go to work and uh, a couple of the other guys also got out of school early so uh, we got in this habit of of uh, leaving school and going over to one guy's house and we would smoke pot for like three hours. And uh, because you know you didn't, go to, you didn't go to work every day right after school. Everybody else is asleep. I got the fan going, but I'm afraid that I'm gonna set off this damn smoke detector over here. It's all the way on the other side of the room, and the fan is right here, so I'm hoping that's going to be good enough. Anyway, you didn't go to school every day right after school. And as a matter of fact, I don't think I ever went to, to work right after school. I think uh, my, my, I worked second shift, and it was usually always like 3 or 4 o'clock, four, well, probably 4 or 5 o'clock before I went to work. So I always had a couple of hours after after class, and we would go over to this guy's house and we would smoke pot and we'd play asshole or watch TV for like three hours. And this one particular day, we did our regular thing, and I was supposed to go to work at I think it was four, but we had all bought a head of acid. And uh, we had all made plans that we were going to, we were just going to go ahead and do acid. So I was going to call in sick to work. So we leave and we go, we stop by my house. I run in to grab my head of acid. And while I'm in there, I just went ahead and dropped it. And uh, come back out. <laughs> when I get back in the, in the van, they both tell me that they've decided they're not going to do it that uh, they're just not in the mood to uh, to go on it. Cause you, I mean, if you've ever done it, you know you gotta be in the mood for that. It's always fun, but along about that fifth or sixth hour, you're really, and most times you're really ready for the shit to be over with. 
And if it's a, uh, you know, usually an eight hour ride. Anyway, so I didn't know what the hell to do. I just dropped mine and they're not gonna do it. So we're heading back to their house and I know they're not gonna wanna be around me while I'm doing it. I'm like, what the hell am I gonna do? I mean, I can't go home because my parents think I'm going, I'm going to work and I can't hang out here. So what am I gonna do? So, uh, being that you always make the most intelligent decisions while you're under the influence of something, I decided that I was going to go ahead and go to work. And, uh, I worked at this auto parts store in Vienna, Virginia. It was called Track Auto at the time. I think they eventually changed their name to Super Track. And I don't even know if the if the store even exists now. This was back in like 1990, 91. Probably got bought out or went bankrupt or something. Who knows? So uh, I went ahead and went to work. Now, if my boss and my assistant manager, if the manager of the store and the assistant manager weren't also into stuff, they weren't into that. They were uh, they were into to weed, but they weren't into to stuff like that. But I felt I'd be I'd be relatively safe to do it, you know, as long as they knew that uh, I was under the influence and maybe it would be a smooth day. And uh, it, it worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Except for when I first got there. I got there. Now, I, I when I left my house, we went, we still went over to these guys' houses. And uh, I, I was over there for a couple of hours. So, you know, I was flying pretty high by the time I actually got to work. And uh, walk in. And my ICT teacher is there. In the entire time that I was in the program, he'd never been to the job site. I mean, he, it was common for him to stop by the job site, but he'd never stopped by my job site. So this was the first day, and it just happened to be this day that I was under the influence of LSD. And uh, so I didn't know what the hell to do. I didn't know how to handle it. I'm, I'm sure I didn't handle it very well. I think that uh, he felt that I was embarrassed that he had showed up or something. Because when he was trying to talk to me, I wouldn't like look him right in the eye and I wouldn't carry on the conversation with him. And it was pretty obvious I was trying to avoid him. So I think that uh, that he just thought that I was Embarrassed that he had that he had stopped by or something, which of course I'll take any day of the week as opposed to him knowing, hey, you're on drugs. So anyway, that was my. Uh, first experience upon getting to, to work so I'm of the opinion that I can, can, can it's, a, it's gonna be all downhill from here and uh, it was rough but I managed to get through most of the day until this girl who also went to my high school came up to the counter with a can of fix a flat and I rang it up she paid for it everything was fine and then I picked up the can and I handed it, handed it to her and I said, would you like a bag for that? And this girl looks at me and she goes, no, I'm just going to, you know, put it right in the tire and go. Ah! <laughs> she burst out laughing in my face. And I'm standing there like, <laughs> she walks out and I, run back to the back of the store and I'm like man I gotta go I gotta go home I gotta leave right now I can't stay 
you won't believe what just happened. And they, and both my uh, the manager and assistant manager are back there. And they're looking at me and they're like, you're not going anywhere. You're here. It's not our fault that you chose to you know, light yourself up with some bullshit, which was stupid, by the way. That stuff's got strychnine in it. You know that, don't you? You can fucking kill yourself. Which, of course, I wasn't in the mood to hear at that moment. traumatized that I was at the knowledge that I could not leave and had to stay. So I trudged back on up to my my register and finished out the day. I don't think anything else happened that particular day. But those two particular incidents were just, oh, God. I'm guessing that the way I looked at her I must have looked like I was something. Who knows? And that that's why she reacted, though, because I can't imagine why in the hell she would have just burst out laughing in my face like that. But you know, when you're under the influence of that shit, you think everybody knows. Sorry, my uh, monitor went into sleep mode there. You think that everybody knows. And, uh, which caused problems on another occasion when I was on LSD. On that particular occasion, the buddy of mine and I, we uh, bought a couple of hits and dropped them and we, we decided that we were gonna go see a movie. And the movie we chose was Sex, Lies, and Videotape. <laughs> If any of you have seen that movie, you know that was a that was a long ride. But we're like sex lies and videotape, you know, teenagers, and we're saying, what could be better than watching the boobs on acid? So we went in there, and it wasn't that at all. It was a, it's actually a really good movie with James Spader and uh, Peter Gallagher and Andy McDowell. So the guy I'm with, he he decides he he's not going to stay in. He can't sit in there and watch that movie. So he gets up and leaves. But I. I'm convinced that everybody in this theater knows that I'm under the influence. So I'm too afraid to stand up and walk out. So I sit there and watch the entire movie. <laughs> Before I got up and left. Oh, God, man. Thank God you get shit like that out of your system when you're a teenager. That was about the hardest thing that I ever did. That and mushrooms. Mushrooms are a lot better. Were a lot better. If mushrooms had been any easier to locate, I probably would have chosen to do that before I did acid just about every time. pretty much the same stuff but you definitely have that chemical feel with acid that you don't get with mushrooms that foreign substance feel so mushrooms had been more readily available and easier to come by, I definitely would have preferred to have done that over LSD. And I think the last time I ninety seven maybe? I think it was the last time I ever did ask.
think that should. I don't do anything now. It's been a long time. I guess despite my best efforts to never grow up, there were just some things that I couldn't help but grow out of. I wonder what I should call these life confessions. Confessions by computer light. You know, I wish that I had uh, created categories for some of these videos. You know, like uh, come up with titles, like for the beard care, the ramblings. little different titles for for each one because I got a feeling that you know I'm gonna end up talking about something that I've already talked about before and it would be helpful if I could go back and and look through some of these videos to see if I've ever commented on something before and not having uh, titles for these things specific to whatever it is I'm talking about It may be a little difficult to uh, to locate. There may be a great chance that I will uh, regurgitate some information. But who knows? This is Aristopolis at almost 2 a.m. on a blistery, blustery, blistery, snowy Saturday a.m. You keep an eternal ember burning. See ya.